Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with my new and updated Craft Room 2014 video tour. And I'm not going to call it the Frugal Craft Room because I'm the Frugal Crafter and a lot of people say my craft room isn't that frugal, but I'm going to show you why I think it is and just basically tell you about the stuff I have and how I store it so that you can maybe get some ideas on how to store and organize your stuff. So this is where I'm sitting nowadays and the reason I'm sitting here is because um, it's where I shoot my videos. So this is my camcorder. It was an old VHS camcorder, so it's nice and sturdy. And um, the thing I like about this, and people ask me about the camcorder, is it will tip, loosen that up a little bit, it will tip 90 degrees like that so that I can have it right down on my work surface. And if you're wondering about the dumbbells, I'm not exercising here. I am using that to weight my camcorder down because I raise the back leg so I can really get a square shot of the things I'm working on. And then I weight down the tripod so it doesn't tip over on me. I don't want to break my camera. I've dropped one camera on the cement floor and they don't appreciate that. Cameras don't like being dropped on the cement floors, apparently. Good to know, huh? All right, so since I, it's winter and I did a winter mode video where I showed you about the space heater under here to keep me warm and toasty while I'm working in this very chilly place. It's 57 degrees here. Um, and that's because I haven't had the space heater on. But I've got, um, I've got this little kind of cabaret over here where I have all my tools. I've recently moved them all over here so I can reach everything. Um, stamps that are brand new that I'm working on for design team projects. All my little cigar boxes full of you know, blending daubers and stuff like that, um, stipple brushes, whatnot. Back here, I have all of my um, watercolor crayons and colored pencils. Um, I've got my microwave kiln. Whoa! I should have thought about that a little bit better before I dragged off. But microwave kiln supplies, bead making supplies, um, my pearl X and eyeshadows. Um, just stuff that I, you know, might want to grab. Got some more paper and odds and ends back there in Dollar Tree baskets. Um, these are from Target, Walmart, wherever. They're just the cube units. And what I did was use some zip ties to make some additional shelves. I used to grab these all the time when they were on sale back um, in my apartment and for my uh, studio I used to have downtown. And they're just great because you can take them apart, lean them against a wall, bring them out when you need some more space. They're completely modular. And I like to keep most of my stuff modular so that um, as my collection grows and shrinks, I can move stuff around. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that I didn't collect all this stuff overnight. Um, a lot of these supplies I had for more than 10 years before my children were born. All of my art supplies are quite old. Um, and I started scrapbooking after my son was born about 12 years ago. So, you know, it's not like this happened overnight and I just started, you know, binging. I had a studio, a four room suite downtown where I taught art classes, a home studio, and all this stuff just kind of came into this area afterwards. So in case you're ready to dial hoarders, 1-800 hoarders on me, it's, there's the, uh, there's the justification. Um, so these all have my 12 by 12 papers. And then, um, if you want to come around, Kathy is filming for me. Yay. Um, so you don't have to, you know, get seasick. Well, I try to open things. I have different things in these drawers. Obviously, the things I don't use very much are over here because this is in the way. But, um, like, all my paper mart ribbons are in here because I need to keep them together for my uh, design work with them. And, you know, every drawer is labeled with the um, contents that are in them. This is a big hodgepodge where when I make a background that I don't use or I die cut something I don't use, I throw it in there so then I can just kind of whip out a bunch of cards at one time rather than just throwing them away or having them clutter up my... Um, my table. I'm not going to go to all those because I've done that before in other videos. Um, you know, glass for uh, glass fusing, clay tools, templates. All my templates are in here. All my scrapbooking templates and all my stencils are in folders by theme. These are little masks that I've made. A lot of these are homemade. Some of them are just really old. Um, I get a lot of supplies given to me, especially general crafts like these stencils. People get into a uh, a hobby and then they get out of it and they ask me if I want their supplies. That happens quite a bit. I think I'm kind of known around here as the, cra the artist in town or the crafter in town. And because I teach so many classes, I'm often passed, have supplies passed on. I like these. These are hard to find now, but they are the color box blending and moldable foam shapes. Those are fun. I drag those out every once in a while when I want to feel artsy. And my new goggles that my husband got me along with a leather apron for when I make my glass beads so I don't burn myself. Oops, they're upside down. Pretty cool. Pretty attractive, eh? <laughs> we can do that for my, my thumbnail picture. These are all uh, art pads and large sheets of art paper. Most of these are from back when I was teaching and I have been, you know, 
slowly but surely making a dent in that. And I just threw this painting in front just because I kind of ran out of wall space while I was moving up. This is new. Uh, my husband redid his workshop and uh, he didn't need this shelf anymore. And I like the deep shelves because I can um, put large baskets and stuff. This is all paper mart product that I need for upcoming videos, paper shredder. This is also all paper mart product. I grabbed this at Harbor Freight for eight bucks because I figured um, it'd be a nice backup when my regular heat gun craps the bed. Um, plus sometimes I te teach classes and I need an extra heat gun. This, this one gets really hot though, so I wouldn't use it in the kids class. This is a box of randomness. I've got some binding tools. I've got some plastic bags, bottle cutter, just the stuff that's too big and gommy to put anywhere else pretty much. Um, deco scissors, because I still use them. I've had those for a long time, but they come in very handy. And these are some parts that I cannibalized from a Creatopia machine that I won. They're decorative edges, edger rotary cutters, and I use them in the little notch and die tool that I don't know why I bought, but I have found uses for. Um, these little drawers, I have calligraphy supplies in the top three, and then I have a lot of um, kind of UFO projects, my jewelry projects that are in progress. Sometimes I'll start working on a big batch of something and then I just totally lose my steam and then I just throw it in there to revisit at a later date and some, you know, resin pendants that I've made that I don't have use for. And there's more UFOs over here. They just, you know, it's just a great, great place to collect them until I'm ready to get ready for there and I want to um, get you know make a bunch of stuff and some more binding stuff just so it's ready my binding machines up there I drag it down when I need to bind stuff um, my paracord storage actually it's my husband's paracord but it was in a mess upstairs so I um, I took it to organize it get a back stock of yarn from my Martin's haul they couldn't fit on my yarn rack so I'm gonna have to do some knitting to get that all back in order and uh, pastels these are some pan pastels that I am looking forward to using right off. And these are chests of um, artist pastels that I had for, for a long time ago that I want to get back into doing more. Big tub of acrylic paint. Um, I rescued this, it was, um, uh, it was at Sam's Club. It was full of candies, little candy favors. And I thought that's gonna be perfect for storing beads. So I um, bought that and the kids took care of the bubble gum that was in the little test tubes and I have the Bead storage. Um, and here are some triangles that I use with my score pal to make envelopes. I've got a quilter's ruler that came in that little hand-me-down quilt. Um, I have a mat that that goes with that I use on my table a lot. And this was a little envelope box um, maker that Crafters Companion sent me because I got published using some of their products. So that's another that's another reason I get a lot of my supplies. I get incentives for getting published to a certain company's products. I'll send you free stuff if you get published. So if you do, send it to the company whose supplies you used and they send you stuff. All right, Jason made this, my husband, uh, made this for me this year. I wanted really big, deep shelves. I had a dresser here that was um, reclaimed from another part of the house and it was just saggy and old and the drawers didn't work. And I really just wanted big open spaces I could shove stuff. And I have a lot of odd shaped things that need space. So in the way back, I have things that I don't use very often. The Teresa Collins stamp makers back there along with the refills uh, for two reasons. One, I, I only drag that out when I'm gonna make a bunch of stamps. And um, two, I really don't want any light exposure. So I have a lot of lights in here and a lot of daylight bulbs. So I want all that stuff as far away from my lights as possible. I have um, pads of watercolor paper here. These are ones I tend to use for stamping because they're thinner and they're smoother. And I also let my kids use those because it's a less expensive paper. <laughs> This is, I'll tell you about stuff I, this is, these are all leftover scraps from a Boy Scout project, brown vinyl, and I thought these would be cool to make flowers out of. So, I have the, uh, the Island of Misfit craft supplies here. Um, some alphabet stamps, some my um, enamels for when I'm painting on glass, some acrylic beads, another box of Hod Podge, a lot of um, old, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, letterhead, old letterhead from companies that have, they were chucking it, and I use it for, you know, practice stamping. And I also have, um, old books from the library in there that they don't want and I use them in my crafts and art projects. Over here, is that chair in the way? Or can no, you? I got it. Um, adhesives. I have my most used adhesives in here. I've got um, more tapes back there. These are all those making memory foam stamps that were really popular about eight or ten years ago. 
Um, I have a bunch of them. I really like them for using with acrylic paint because I can do signs, I can do scrapbook pages, I can do whatever. They are all in those two uh, things here. And I, um, they would have stored better in their original packaging, but I found it really hard to find the, the letters that I wanted. So in loosely in baggies, I can rifle through and get what I want and not have to take everything out find what I want, then take, you know, half an hour getting it all back in the package. I dump it in the package. It takes up more space, but it's totally worth it in how quickly I can access everything. Of course, if you're in a small space, you might want to keep them in the original packaging. Um, this is 25 pounds of hot glue. My mother thought it was funny for a joke for Christmas a couple years ago. She got me a carton of hot glue. And I was so excited. So I was like, yay, hot glue. I use so much of that stuff. So I've got a ton of glue in there and my backup glue guns because I, um, I teach classes and I need a couple glue guns a lot of times and I and I burnt through several so let's see let's move this out of the way this is my current yarn projects that I actually like to take them with me when I go that's the other thing when I go to watch my kids practice basketball when I'm you know going to a, an appointment anything like that I know I'm gonna spend time waiting I bring my bag of yarn projects because why waste that time? Why just sit there and do nothing? I mean, I can chat with, you know, another parent while I'm knitting or crocheting. I don't have to waste that time. Make good use of it. Um, car rides, you know, if you're not driving, obviously, you know, crochet something. Um, all right, well, Kathy, who's filming, bought me this fabulous cart for my birthday. When was that? Like, several years ago, wasn't it? Several. Several. <laughs> several. And she teased me because these all had lids on them, and the first thing I did was take the lids off because I want instant access so my um embellishments my like brads and eyelets are here and um some more embellishments there just pretty much all my embellishments are in here um then i have you know some book plates and um sharpies you know embellishments oh these are how i store my embossing powders um i keep them upside down i don't know why that's not opening very well looks i got a ut a bottle of ut clogging up the works. Um, I put my embossing powders in here upside down so I can see what color they are. And then I just grab what I need very quickly and easily. And this is my um, seasonal leftovers. So um, leftover Christmas, stuff that I've already stamped and punched. I might use them next year on a card. Um, you know, stuff like that, Valentine stuff. Anything seasonal goes in there and there's some other stuff in there too, I guess. Uh, up top, scissors pliers because if I'm doing jewelry I tend to sit over here so I have all my jewelry pliers here um, my little gelatos they just store better there than anywhere else um, I tried putting them in a tin and it just didn't wasn't working for me so I left them there under here is stuff that I don't use very often but I still need um, or want to keep I've got um, a projector for if I'm doing mural work I'll like take my drawings and I'll project them um, I've got soap making supplies candle making supplies um, stamp making supplies if I'm hand carving glass paints, um, back stock of oil painting brushes. Those were mostly from, for, for my students use. Some plastic templates. Um, I have watercolor supplies, some more templates. I have watercolor tubes because I squeeze my watercolors into my palette, let them dry and I work from that. So the tubes live in there. Wash, uh, soldering supplies, soldering and stained glass supplies. You know, it's basically the stuff that I need to have but I don't want or I want to keep, but I don't um, need to have right out where I can get to them all the time. I get asked about this more than anything else, and it's how I store my stamps. These are binders from Sam's Club. Um, and you know, I just kind of would pick up a few every time I would go in. They come in like a four pack for 12 bucks, I think, right? They did at the time. And then in the binders, I have my stamps in page protectors. Um, the Martha Stewart page protectors at Staples have these, have nice divided ones, or I use full ones and I just put cardstock in and slide them in. And I label on the end what the contents are so that I can find what I need quickly. And um, so obviously I have a lot. Stamping is um, one of my favorite things and I also consider my stamps uh, not only useful but a collection. I don't collect much but I enjoy collecting rubber stamps. Um, and these letterpress trays which I picked up um, at different yard sales and antique shops um, I have my sentiments and I've taken some Jenga blocks and I have actually taken sentiments out of stamp like unmounted stamp sets and put them on Jenga blocks because I rather just grab it and stamp it's just it makes sense for me to have it like this it wouldn't work for everybody but it makes sense for me um, my ink pads are over here my husband made that foam core holder and then these Chester drawers holds specialty ink pads such as rainbow pads and um, 
pigment inks down here, and then like your stays on and resist pads and different stuff like that up there. And uh, my whispers pads are up there. And jewelry is up here. Um, this is back stock jewelry stuff that I don't I, doubles things that I had that I'll add into other things. You know, like I have ear wires and stuff, but I already have ear wires in this little making memories thing. I have all my findings and ear wires and all that, head pins and stuff like that are all in here, all my metal stuff. Um, all my beads are so, uh, sorted by color and these, these are great. Um, I started off with two and then I just kept adding to my collection. They are by Ultimate Stacker and um, these lock, but I keep them unlocked because um, they're really hard to open. So it's great if you have little kids, you can lock those all down, they can't, they're not, they're not getting into those. those, those things are hard to open. And jewelry adhesives are right here. And then I have these little Tic Tac containers with little beads. These are available full, like this, at Joann's for 10 bucks. Or cheaper if they're on sale or if you have a coupon. And so that's pretty much all jewelry making stuff up here. I have some more of these stamps. These are Stampin' Up! DVD stamp cases. And also the stamp maker cases are the same size. So I store my stamp maker and my handmade stamps from the stamp maker in these little cases as well. Labeled, of course, so I can find what I want quickly. My score pal. Um, and my alcohol markers are here. I did have colored pencils in here too, but I recently tinned them all because it wasn't working for me anymore. And you have to be um, willing to abandon ship when you're, when you're figuring out how you want to store your stuff. Because um, something that works for you six months ago might not work for you now be flexible and if you notice that something's bothering you or you wish it was something else some way else just um you know change it and see if that works better you can't play in your room and, and say this is going to be perfect this is how it's always going to be once you start working in it you realize what things you need to tweak um, my sewing machine is here and my sewing the stuff i need most often is right here and this is some fabric for a jacket lining that i will undertake shortly um, I found this on the side of the road with it's a French cleat shelf and um, I had my husband put some cleats in the wall, put the cleats in the wall so I could hang that up and I have um, odds and ends my mom made me this for Christmas, um, Kathy's daughter made me that for my birthday and I've got knitting needles up there and it's a pretty sturdy shelf so hopefully it doesn't come crashing down and <laughs> total my sewing machine. Over here I've got books, letterpress plates create a look template, some more stamps and binders that I've run out of room over there for, um, toaster oven on the bottom, stuff I don't need very often. This wine crate holds my embossing folders. It's divided, so it keeps everything nice and tall. And this wine crate holds uh, cards that I haven't packaged up for sale yet. I've got vinyl and rolls up there. Um, this is Die Cut Central, and I have my um, die cutting machine. It's a Cricut. I use Scal software, though, so it pr behaves more like an Eclipse or a Silhouette. Um, my laminator is right over here. It's quite small, actually. Maybe I should move and you should get in there. I'll explain what's there. Uh, the laminator and refill packets are in there. I have a gypsy in there. Um, and, you know, basic things like that. What do we have for time? Oh, 18 minutes. We can get this done in 20. All right, up here I have some candy dishes, candy containers, I don't know what you call them, that I got from brown and white paper when they went out of business for 25 cents each. And I have my silk flowers that I bought, you know, at the dollar store and took apart. Um, empty boxes up there for other storage. Uh, paint brushes, buttons, all this scrapbooky stuff, glitter. My steel rule dies are in a yard sale find. These were two for five dollars on a yard sale and they work out great. Um, a soup can holding uh, some embossing folders and I've got my thin lits dies and I think this is kind of fun, all in this little tea box. So that stores those really um, I made this ribbon shelf, I have a video of that, on how to make that on my YouTube channel. Holds my um, small spools of ribbon, scraps are here, more cardstock here. This is a record cabinet, nice! Um, holding all my cardstock, plain cardstock. This is uh, an old library rack they didn't want anymore so it was free and it has my yarn on it. Um, and if you just spin around here I got more random Storage, these are all, these two cubbies are magazines I've been published in, so I'm keeping a copy of each of those. Um, just little envelopes, pastels from when I taught, these are my classroom pastels, um, reference files, card bases, um, odds and ends, and uh, more junk under here that really isn't very interesting. So, that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you had a question on anything that I kind of breezed by quickly, 
uh, let me know and I will get back to you. And um, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.